Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this tutorial we will be taking a look at the anatomy of the radial nerve. This video is a collaboration between Anatomy Zone and teachmeanatomy.info. Check out the links in the video description below for some useful articles to accompany this video tutorial. The radial nerve is one of the major peripheral nerves of the upper limb and is derived from the brachial plexus as a continuation of the posterior cord. This schematic of the brachial plexus shows how the radial nerve contains nerve fibres from spinal roots C5 to T1. Check out my video series on the brachial plexus for more information on this topic and to learn about its structure in more detail. The radial nerve has both sensory and motor function. In terms of motor function, it is essentially responsible for innervating the muscles of the posterior compartment of the arm and the forearm. In the arm, this means it innervates the triceps brachii, which is responsible for extension at the elbow joint. In the forearm, it innervates the majority of the extensor muscles and is therefore responsible for extension of the wrist and the fingers and is also involved in supination of the forearm. With regard to sensory function, the radial nerve innervates most of the skin of the posterior side of the forearm and the dorsal surface of the lateral side of the palm and lateral three and a half digits. You can see this sensory distribution illustrated by the red shading in this diagram. Let's take a look now at the anatomical course of the radial nerve. The radial nerve is a continuation of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus containing nerve fibres from all five roots from C5 to T1. In this model here, you can see the axillary and brachial arteries made translucent so that you can see the course of the radial nerve and its relation to these structures. The radial nerve arises in the axilla, exiting posteriorly to the brachial artery. It passes with the profunda brachii artery into the posterior compartment of the arm via the triangular interval. Before doing so, it gives rise to branches which supply the medial and long heads of the triceps muscle. In addition, it also gives rise to a sensory branch. This is the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm, which supplies the skin on the posterior surface of the upper arm. You can see this nerve highlighted here in blue as it curves around posteriorly to provide this sensory innervation. The radial nerve then descends down the arm, traveling in a shallow depression on the surface of the humerus. This depression is known as the radial groove. As it moves inferiorly, the radial nerve wraps around the humerus in a lateral direction and gives a branch to the lateral head of the triceps brachii. During its course in the arm, the nerve is accompanied by the deep branch of the brachial artery, the profunda brachii, which you can see here. The radial nerve gives off two more sensory branches in the arm, the inferior lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm and the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm. From this posterior view, you can see the inferior lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm in dark blue color and the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm in pink. I've switched now to an anterior view and you can see the inferior lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm perforating through the lateral head of the triceps to innervate the skin of the lateral part of the lower half of the arm. You can see in pink here the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm, which is also known as the dorsal antibrachial cutaneous nerve. This also perforates through the lateral head of the triceps and passes posteriorly to innervate a strip of skin down the middle of the posterior forearm. Having given off these two sensory branches, the radial nerve then passes through the lateral intermuscular septum to enter the anterior compartment where it is then situated between the brachialis muscle and the brachioradialis muscle. You can see the proximal end of the brachioradialis muscle here. The brachialis is not shown on this view of the model. To enter the forearm, the radial nerve moves anteriorly over the lateral epicondyle of the humerus through the cubital fossa. I've zoomed in a little closer and you can see that within the forearm, the nerve terminates by dividing into two branches, 
the deep branch in green and the superficial branch which you can see here in blue. The deep branch is a motor branch. It passes between the two heads of the supinator muscle and continues as the posterior interosseous nerve to innervate the muscles in the posterior compartment of the forearm. The superficial branch is a sensory branch. This branch descends down the anterolateral aspect of the forearm, deep to the brachioradialis muscle, along with the radial artery. It then curves around laterally over the radius passing dorsally. Within the hand, the superficial branch passes over the anatomical snuff box and then innervates the dorsolateral surface of the lateral three and a half digits and their associated palm area. I've switched over to a diagram now to illustrate the sensory distribution of the various branches of the radial nerve. There are four branches in total which provide sensory innervation that arise from the radial nerve. On the left hand side, showing an anterior view of the arm, in the red shading you can see the area of innervation supplied by the inferior lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm. On the right hand side, the blue area of shading shows the area supplied by the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm. The yellow shaded area is supplied by the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm and the purple area is supplied by the superficial branch. So that's an overview of the anatomy of the radial nerve. For more anatomy articles check out teachmeanatomy.info and for more anatomy videos check out anatomyzone.com. Thank you for watching.